Mm. I know this song. Did you punch record? What's that? Did you punch record or <laughs> <Yeah>. anything? <clears throat> Welcome and you are listening to another episode of the What's Next podcast. One of Phil's favourite songs, this one, The Joker and the Queen, Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran. Had you heard it? Yeah, I heard it. It's not a favourite because I don't know Ed Sheeran. Oh, okay. 69 million listens, this no one. No way. Yeah. 69 million sickos out there. Yeah. The, a... uh, the family, just as a side point, as we typically do on this top rated podcast, go off tangent. Um, Ed Sheeran tickets come out. Really? Mm. For New Zealand. Yeah, and the girls at home want to go to the, the concert, the, the daughters. Yeah. And then uh, Grace piles on. You're probably watching because it's after three o'clock. Hello. Um, that's, uh, that's probably inappropriate for a teacher, but look, we'll carry on. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, they've, they've all bought tickets. Wow. And they're like, Dad, you want to come? I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> I'm not going to see that in Lynn. <laughs> they were offended. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, what are you going to do? Like, I'll take you guys there, I'll pick you up if you need to, because that's just what a, a good dad and a good husband will do. What a guy. For his family. And they're like, oh, will you just sit outside and just listen to it? I'm like, no, because my ears will bleed. The point of me not coming is because it's shit. Not to sit outside and wait for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I've, I've probably, probably polarised a lot of our listeners with that controversial comment that I don't like Ed Sheeran. Jay, do you go to Ed Sheeran? No. Anyone no. you know going? No. Do you like do you like YouTube? Mm. Yeah, it's not a strong guess, but he's, he's yeah, so he yeah, so see there. my opinion isn't it, like in isolation. So I'm pleased and comforted to know that, you know, Jade might not be a hard like no, I don't like him, she's on the fence. Yeah. Yeah, I did catch my girlfriend on TikTok firm with Justin Bieber last mm-hmm. night, which was concerning. But uh, it's interesting how these pop stars or whatever they're called can catch she's such a wide Justin range. Bieber. Yeah, he had a shirt off and probably, you know. Pants too, I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't look for too long, but um, he's got a lot of tats, that guy. Yeah. But how they capture such a wide range of um, audience. They almost make a mockery of the, if you advertise to everybody, you'll never figure out, uh, you'll never have any customers, because they seem to just get kids of all ages through to adults going for these and loving them. So they're doing something like these pop stars. Hmm. Shirtless TikToks, maybe. I don't know if you. I'm not on TikTok, else. thank God. Yeah. And uh, I'll stay away if I'm going to be targeted with Ed Sheeran and that Justin kid. Well, he hasn't come up topless on mine, but um, anyone topless come up on yours? Not necessarily entirely topless, but quite an older lady in Australia. Oh yeah. Um, popped up. That was quite weird. But yeah, I quickly swipe past that, of course, because I don't want the algorithm to give me any more of that. Any more? Yeah, yeah. you'll do that on your burner phone. Yeah, I'm logging in Cognito and uh, <laughs> that was my top tech account. Yeah, just <laughs> I didn't realise they had an incognito mode. Yeah, that must have used to be that. Data. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, we've um, an introduction, uh, an interesting intro to get to this point. Wow. <laughs> wow. So Luke is wow. uh, hashtag not sponsored uh, Arepa. Yeah. Is that how it's pronounced? Mm-hmm. Um, Tropic. Brain drink, and I've actually heard this stuff being recently advertised on ZB of all places. Well, wow. yep, uh, so they've also got a bit of budget. Um, it's a really jazzed up Ribena, it is, and wow. we offer it to our clients when they come here and they think we're cool because we are cool. Um, 
But yeah, you've mixed yours with uh, Ciroc. I have. I've really jazzed my Eureka up to probably counter out the nootropic wane effect. And uh, it's quite tasty, the Arepa plus the rock. And you've got a packet of Doritos in front of you there too, mate. I do. Look, I'm a peckish in between uh, episodes. And we were just discussing what, on the back of the budget podcast and your sh- controversial take on a sugar tax, True. Uh, of what snacks would be appropriate in our office that wouldn't be caught in the sugar tax net. And that was an interesting discussion. And then I brought up... Um, the natural confectionery company Lollies, and you said that they do have twenty five percent sugar. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, and I've taken that to mean that they'll be outside the energy sugar tax. Yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah, they only bought it from Australia though, so we won't have to capture the tax back that way. But anyway, yeah. So really, scrapes through the cupboard, and there is a packet here for those of you watching. We'll definitely be able to see, um, but there is a packet of Doritos, Thai sweet chili corn chips and with it um, some Doritos medium salsa and the salsa is quite good. The health star rating on the Doritos is 2 out of 5. Yeah. I don't eat Doritos, I banned myself a few years ago because I had quite the uh, habit with those. Did you? Yeah. Should so. we get Ben Masters on uh, speed dial here? And yeah. Get his input in? yeah. They'll be, probably see this and say that I'm eating them but I've been very good. If anyone knows any healthy snacks that we can have in the office, LMP at nextadvisory.nz. <clears throat> And we'll get those in the cupboard. Maybe you've got a business where you sell healthy snacks. We love to support small businesses. And if it's gets the two ticks from us, then uh, you know we'll uh, put it into our budget. Yeah, and and shout it out on the uh, yeah on the to our social family. sphere. Thousands of listeners. The pod, the gram, the book, email list, the LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Very cheap advertising. It is. One thing a lot of business owners don't do, mate, and that's advertise. Or collect any data along the way when they are doing their advertising. And then when they go to sell their business, oh, they realise they've made a big mistake. Well, they do it and they do a shit job of it. There it is. And it's true. And we know that because we look at businesses and we see their data. And we go, you're spending money on advertising and what's happening to your sales? Absolutely. Fucking nothing. So why are you continuing to spend tens of thousands of dollars on advertising when nothing's changing on your sales. You would expect to see that if your advertising makes your sales grow. Mm. I would have thought, unless you've got some kind of strategy that's just like, yeah, we don't want to grow, we just want to keep what we've got. Yeah. Uh, I was speaking to a marketer yesterday and they said that the market has turned a little bit. And it's mm. gotten harder. Another one earlier in the week in the e-commerce space and just saying Facebook's gotten harder, Facebook advertising. And each year you kind of think, oh, that it's that it's you know everyone's slowly going to stop and whatnot and then it's going to become a bit more expensive and it does and you kind of regret that you didn't spend more than the year before mm-hmm. yeah um, but you know we're probably starting to get to a little bit more up, further up that curve of adoption of digital marketing and those types of things so when we're spending money in those spaces we want to really make sure that we're getting something back from it in return and, and at least capturing who has got in touch or leads and things like that so that at some stage we can go back to them. Otherwise, we've got to pay for those leads again. Yeah. Yeah. This And, and the reason why we've kind of spoken of it and we've decided to talk about this today and for you viewers that are deciding to tune in and watch the live stream is we've done some due diligence work on uh, some businesses recently and the whole e-invoicing thing is coming up. Yes. And uh, we've had some experience where... Um, a couple of businesses, well, a, a business that you know of, and then I got a phone call from a client who's in a new business uh, where there's some very established organizations out there and they're quite big. Um, we won't say who they are. One of them uses a big four accounting firm. Well, they will remain nameless, but they are based in the Auckland CBD. They all are, and I bet you they've got, no, I don't know who they are, so we, we won't narrow it down, but they're a big four firm. And this business uses zero, but they still print out all of their invoices. Oh, this is right. Yeah, this convo from the other day. Controversial yeah. as fuck. Like, yeah. why would you like have supplier invoices printed out, hole punch them? I, mean, I can't even remember the last time I used a hole punch. That's a good point. Or a guillotine. Or oh, that would be going back to the school days. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those. Cut the edge off. Yeah, they were good fun. Yeah. Trying to get as many sheets as you can, but then get a nice clean cut. Or even um, what people need to understand with their accounting fees at the big four firms is part of what we're paying is the rent that the big four have to pay for the credences. Oh, via the disbursement charge, eh? That's yeah. where you're going. 
yeah, with your records that they store, all these paper records and all the paper records that they've stored from over the years because they haven't gone electronic, they're now charging you the rent of their credenz space because they're inefficient. Yep, and look, another firm that shall remain nameless that's outside of the big four, but are a big firm, uh, we went through some of their fees uh, this week, actually. Yes. And that disbursement charge, I'm going to say it, it's bullshit. Because normally when firms do disbursements, it'll be a percentage of the fee. Yeah. And it'll be in terms of engagement. By the way, we charge a standard office disbursement of 3% of the fee no, 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 to recover our inefficiencies, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. the fact that we print paper. Mm -hmm. We're stuck in But by the way, we're fucking paperless. Not. Um, and we had a look at it. We started running our abacus over the fee and working out that the disbursement range anywhere from uh, seven percent all the way down to about two of the total fee. Of the total fee, yeah. and oh, I'm, I'm, me personally, I was in absolute fucking hysteria. Yeah, over it. Yeah. yeah, I was just losing it. Um, but be mindful of this kind of stuff. Mm. You know, the technology's here for a reason. Adopt it and change. It's there to make your life easier, not harder. Yeah. And by the way, in case your accountant hasn't told you, storing records electronically does meet the seven-year record-keeping criteria thing. Mm. So we don't have to print invoices off, hole punch them, Standard. stick them in some shitty little file that goes into some shitty little fucking cretenza that you're never going to see again. Yeah. Electronic storage. And guess what? Newsflash. It's cheaper than bloody paper storage. Mm. And most of your accounting functions or softwares have probably got the capability built into them. There's just someone in a business or in a team that is the laggard or the person, the barrier. It's like, nah, 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 we're going to do it this way. And look, uh, without name problem, it would be Jan from accounts. Jan, come yeah, on. Or, or Pete from accounts. Pete from Tinstead accounts. Nah, Ben from accounts. Ben from accounts. Oh, shit. Ben, sorry, Jake. Ben, smash it. Ben, smash it. I'm on the desk, mate. Did it? Was that me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, 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 I probably shouldn't have put it on. Try to spell it the next advisory move. Click a bit contained on the two bottles of Ciroc. Hashtag not sponsored. If anyone wants to send us something, look, they know what we drink. Um, but coming back on topic, yeah, either Jan or Ben from accounts, they're worried about protecting their job because they're worried that technology is going to come in and take over. Well, it's just going to speed it up and make your life easier so that you can redeploy your thinking capabilities and your value add to the business in a different way. Yeah, you can start cleaning the credenza, the dust off the credenza rather than putting the documents in the credenza. Yeah. You'll just change your role. You fine. could even get to a position that you've made the business so efficient from a technology point of view that you could say to the big boss that makes the decisions, you can say, look, let's get rid of the credenza. I'll arrange to have the documents destroyed and we'll build an office in there and then how about I move into that office? So you've just gone from open plan living with all the crew to your own office. I mean, if anything, in today's bloody modern office environment, having your own office, mm. you fucking made it. Put a bunk bed in your office now? Like, I swear, when I got my first office, sorry, mate, and uh, I believe I was working down the viaduct, like, I, I, I rolled in there, big baller. I, I, I reckon I grew an extra inch over much. Really? Easy. Did you have a name on the door? Nah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nah. So that was next. Yeah, but that never happened. Really? It was you boosted. Boosted. Yeah, yeah then back to open planning and then uh, uh, back to, then, then ultimately to a sweet shop in Parnell and here we are. And the rest is history. Five years later. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things, mate, that we've seen through this due diligence, and just to bring people up to speed with due diligence, basically you're going through and you're analysing the business to figure out, is this maybe something that a potential new buyer wants to go ahead mm -hmm. with? And what things do we need to be thinking about? What are they doing? What are they not doing? What data have they got? What can they prove that they've been collecting to back up some of the statements that they're making when they go to sell this business? And I think what you found recently with a couple of these transactions is that they've been driven by emotion mm -hmm. and general kind of feel. And when you've asked for the data to support it, there hasn't been any. Is that right? Absolutely. Fucking nothing. Yeah. I actually heard the penny drop. When they open that email, I'm like, hmm, jeez. But you're right, like, the, and, and, and the due diligence thing fits really nicely into our translating job, doesn't it? Mm. You know, because the numbers tell a story and we're there to tell the story. And you dig a little bit deeper and go, what's the underlying stuff here? And, and we looked at some of the numbers and we posed some questions to the vendor. 
and on each of the points that they raised in the information memorandum, the IM, which is like the prospectus for the person that's looking at buying the business that says, hey, you can buy this business because it's really cool, uh, filled with emotion. This one was uh, more emotional than uh, any other that I've sort of read yeah. in recent times. And uh, they basically said, hey, look, you've said this, where's the data to support this statement? You've said this, where's the uh, data to support this other statement? And just come back. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. No data. Nothing. And then, and then we asked for some other stuff, and then they bring in paper records. Oh, gosh. So, like, if, if orders come through or a sale comes through, and there's like these paper things that are filled out, I'm like, what? What, what is this? What the fuck is this? What, like, what's going to happen with it? You know, and you could, I, I skim through them, and okay, I accept that some businesses are still, well, I shouldn't accept, but yeah, some businesses are still stuck in a paper environment and there's technology solutions out there that will get you out of it but scanning through these paper things a name and a phone number and that's pretty much it yeah like where's some thinking to go can I have an email address yeah and then get Ben from accounts oh boy into this shit into a fucking thing a list <laughs> yeah but was that not happening fuck no not at all no well, pardon my French no yeah um the data wasn't there for starters, and then their uh, advertising strategy is solely around email marketing. Um, and I would love to see that email list, and then we can upload it to our local recordings or ourselves. Yeah, but that's probably not. Yeah. But anyway, um, then get that email list and go look. Can I have your email list for the last four years and see how it's grown or change? Nice. How have they captured? the new customers that are coming through on these paper-based orders and there is just a massive gap there of lost opportunity. And, and it kind of, it, I feel really quite bad. If, if I had the money and the spare time, both of which I don't have, it'd potentially be a business I reckon I could buy, yeah. we could buy, anyone could buy. Mm. And you don't even need to be a technician to be able to run this business because it's start. You just got to be there to basically unlock and realize the opportunity. Yeah, nice. Now, I guess that's what a lot of people do, right? They try and find businesses like that, pull some capital together, and then uh, maximise that business and then sell it off and make yeah. some nice, sweet cap and gains. The, the, the other thing, not only be paper-based and then the advertising thing, no CRM. Not at all. No. Two decade business. Yeah. Top so yeah. You, 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 the statement was that our customers come from blah, 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 blah suburbs in Auckland. Okay. Because this is where we're based, so this is where our customers come from. Well, give me a list of your customers and where they're from that confirms that. The simple CRM system. Yeah, there is that. Nothing. Give me something that's going to show the, the, the top 10% of your customers and how often they spend with you. Nothing. Oh. That, 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 there was a thing in the IM that said these are our uh, top products. Cool. Where's the data to support that you know that these are the popular ones? Nothing. Wow. Nothing at all. No. So it's all just basically of pure feel. Of we've been doing this for a long time, we know. Yeah. 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 And and what we've said to the prospective purchaser is the fundamentals of the business are still there. It's not like you're gonna get the keys to this. And then all of a sudden, the day that you get it, it's just going to fucking disappear. Yeah. Like the sales are going to No, that's not going to happen. But there's a real risk that the business is actually on a downward trend at the moment because although sales are stable in dollar terms, in volume of transactions, it's probably going backwards. But we can't confirm that because we don't have the data. <laughs> Jeez. What like the, the, the assumptions that we've made would loosely stack up that order volume is decreasing. So did the potential buyer see this as an opportunity to get some of these things right and then add some more value to the business? 100%. So that they can see that there's opportunity and are prepared to roll their sleeves up and invest. Yeah. And, and they've set aside some cash to go, right, we need to be able to do A, B, C, D, and E. And we'll set a budget to it and execute. Yeah. But at the same time, that highlights risk. I'm going, well, we're about to shell out X amount of dollars for a business. The bank's going to take a security over the business and our family home. If we don't get this right, 
with the loop and the hunt. Yeah. But gross. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think that's reasonably unlikely mm. because these people seem quite smart. But it's nonetheless a risk. So, you know, it, it, it's an opportunity for the purchaser to go back to the uh, seller, the vendor. Yeah, hey, look, there's no sweetheart. We need to sit down and, and talk about this purchase price. Yeah. Um, and, and see if they can renegotiate it. Um, do I rate their chances? Yeah, probably not. Because probably I've not. already signed the agreement and that's so far down the path. Yeah. That the vendor, who I think is quite smart, will just be like, well, no, and play on the emotional fact of none of the scope of life. And then that's why anyway. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they'll be able to take some of those emails, for instance, and start a CRM there, and then maybe if they use Shopify, link them up to be able to see who's coming through and then start tracking some of those purchases and things like that, or depending on what it is that they're selling. But there's, there's solutions to all these problems. There are, yeah. yeah. And it's just, it, it shows you the importance when you are a business owner of taking the time to work on your business, not yeah. in it. It's so easy to go, right, I'm going to work Monday to Friday and these are the things that I'm going to do and it's just going to help the business to go. But actually taking the time to go, right, for an hour each day or four hours on a Friday or, or however you structure your week to go, right, I'm going to make an effort to do something on my business that's going to make it better next week. Yeah. And this business owner who's selling the business has said to our prospective purchaser client that they've known the website needs work and they're like, it's on the to-do list. But then when it comes to the top of the to-do list to look at, it's yeah. like, mm, I'll find something else. Yeah, yeah we're, we're making some cool on the so, Exactly. And, and that's the point, is the business makes a really good income to support the lifestyle of the existing business owner. It supports their lifestyle goals, their, their income goals, so there's, there's no real need for them to push and drive harder to make the business better, which would in turn get a better sale price. Yeah. So at the um, vendors, uh, the downside for them is they could have actually sold it for a lot more if they've got some of the stuff right. Yeah, nice. But I guess that's the key bit there, right? Is it understanding, especially if you're thinking about selling at some stages, are you doing these things that are actually going to have a huge difference to what you can sell a business for in the future, rather than going like, ah, oh, we can't be bothered doing that. Mm. Yeah. And and look, if, if you're not sure about any of this stuff, ask your accountant. Yes. Ask us. Because it, it doesn't take that long to be able to look at your P&L and go, Fuck, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars in one particular area of your business, but it's having no impact. Mm. Why? Let's start asking tough questions and start to get to the bottom of this. And then go, well, have you considered doing this instead? Have you considered doing that instead? Oh, you've got the ability to be able to sell this, but can you upsell this, 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 or this? Yeah, I'll go on some margin. But uh, <clears throat> none of that. So, you know, the, the purchase will be able to roll up their sleeves and get busy. And I think their first quarter call should be uh, digitizing the business and moving to a better online platform that's integrated with all of their um, uh, point of sale stuff to give them some data, which they'll then be able to leverage off of to then find new customers and grow. Nice. Looking forward to seeing the growth of that if they do uh, end up buying that and how that goes. Um, the what was I going to ask? Um, well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it does all work out for them and they can actually squeeze those opportunities. But I guess as a practical tip for anybody in business, why not go and find someone who's doing really well in your industry? Mm -hmm. If that's the one thing you do each year to work on your business and get inquisitive, try and buy them a lunch and say, why are you doing this? What are you doing? How are you managing this? And learn from another business owner in your same industry, but similar business, whether they're in your region or out of it. 100% you're spot on. And that's something that we've talked about few times in the past is that most business owners are prepared to help other people because they're more than happy to talk about themselves. Other than the only exception to this is the accounting industry. Oh yeah. Don't, if you're an accountant and you want help and you don't know how to do something, don't go ask them another accountant because we don't do that. No, I can't tell you my secrets. Yeah, no, 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 very particular. Mm -hmm. Except us because an accountant got in touch with us and uh, wanted some pointers and spent some time with them and said, hey, this is how we do things. Yeah. Um, you know, showed some bits and pieces, showed them around, gave them some comfort, stoked as happy as. Yep. Um, you know, and look, this dude, uh, big balls, good on him for, for reaching out and more than happy to share. Uh, if, if I was in his shoes, I wouldn't have done that because I know that I'd be asking probably some 
pound mile and stuff, dude. It's uh, close to retirement. Oh, no, that's not how we do things. No. <laughs> First, you need to print off the invoice, and then you need to record a disbursement in your time sheet to make sure we build that out to the client and put a zero on the end because you're making the figure out. Anything <laughs> that ends in the zero is made up because you know you can't expect that a piece of paper actually did cost uh, one dollar, but you know the client's not going to figure it out. Think about that and figure it out. Uh, so yeah, go and ask people that are doing well or that are in your industry what it is that you could be doing mm -hmm. and actually take the time to get inquisitive and think, okay, how could I be doing things differently? Otherwise, you just get stuck doing the same things and when it comes to sell the business, all the things that were on the to-do list that you think, oh, we probably should have been doing that, aren't done and they become someone else's opportunity mm. to actually maximise the true potential of your business. I think like any asset, it should be in a state of readiness for sale. Because you don't know when the right person is going to come along with the right dollar. Mm. And, and like, that's the same with your house. Look after it. Yeah. Keep it clean, mow the lawns, do all the stuff. And it would always be ready rather than you just being clambering around. If you've got what else is saleable, that's worth something. We can't really yeah. get shears ready for the car. Yeah. The old classic. You know, you're hooning around and you're... You beat up piece of shit when your man's the 323. <laughs> and yeah. uh, you think, oh, geez, I better sell this because I want to upgrade to my, my hairdresser's car because mm. life's good. And then all of a sudden, I've got to get uh, you know, cleaned, get it vacuumed, may maybe give it a service. Come on, folks, lift your game. You know, and it's the same with your business. Mm. Look after it. So you treat it like it's always on the market for sale. It's good so you should be looking at it and going, can I be doing better? Can I squeeze more out of it? Yeah. If you're good to it, it'll be good to you. Completely off tangent here, mate. Do you oh, know yeah. anyone that's ever brought a show home? No. Or if you're listening, LMP at dextremisory.com. I did see a show home advertise on, on uh, Trading really? the other day. Was yeah, it one of the post group? project or sort of pre? No, po it's all done. Ready all to done. go. Like, yeah. So development must be finished, the sub subdivision, and the show home is the last one to go, I'm assuming. Hey, what are you looking about? Well, I got a message, and this is just uh, in the context of staying outside of the box and learning new things. Mm. And this person was telling me basically, I still have to get my head around it completely, that they brought a show home, but before the project was finished. So then the developer leases it from you. So they pay oh, you. Yep. And what they did is that they, they house set for the years in which it took until they could move into it. Mm. And they've paid down a shit ton of their debt. Happy fucking days. Yeah. I haven't heard of that before. Oh, well, there we go. And this is what this podcast is about, is bringing knowledge to people's brains so that they wouldn't find elsewhere. Right, so you want to go and buy the show home yeah. before the development? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, we all know what happens with housing in this country. And it goes yeah. like, to the moon. The Minister of Debt just pumps it up some more. So yeah, I just wondered if anyone's heard or done something like that, Alan Pitt next advisory .md. Very, very interesting. You and Taz in the market? Upgrade? Yeah. More bedrooms? Nah. Nah. Nah, you've got to spare one already, mate. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you need to come and stay, Greg picks you up. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. I'm just going to be Or if I get kicked out of the yeah, tomorrow, but anyway. Yeah, I just thought maybe there might be someone else out there that's uh, dabbled in that space or mm. we'll knows something about it. Mm. I'd be keen to hear uh, someone else's story. Hey, what a tension that was. Yeah. Yeah. We love a tangent. Yeah, that was my uh, that was my learning from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Then I thought, oh, I'll probably find out if anyone else has gone down that path at some stage. Hey, the other nugget that's just dropped into my mind when we start talking about data is once you've got it, then start and make it useful. Don't go comparing to the average. Oh, I like that. Hey, yes, yeah. See, I knew that would break. Yeah, the kid me up. Excited about a whole draft of that. Yeah, I thought you might. But you know, it's pretty easy to look at it and go, oh, my GP is 35%, yes, that's the industry average, yes, 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 because fucking being an accountant, bloody PwC told me that. Yeah. Well, this is fucking average. How can we squeeze it to get another 2% out of it so you're above average? So many people, eh, they ask, well, what's, what's the you know, average profit for this kind of business, or what's the average margin for this, or what, what margin do you think I should be doing for this? And it's like, oh. Yeah, on that DD. One of the comments that the purchaser put on their workings, which they sent to me because they did some analyses themselves, was um, uh, margin seems low, cost of goods sold too high. I'm like, how the fuck do you know? Yeah. 
Like, where have you gotten this data from? Because you've got no previous experience in this industry. Yeah. So, so where are you getting this from to think that it was low? Mm. I mean, it did transpire that it was slightly low, but not way out of whack. Like, yeah. we're not talking 10 or 20% of the whack. But cool. it's certainly got improve, uh, room for improvement. I guess there's two ways to think, right? And one is that you just compare yourself to other businesses mm -hmm. and you think, oh, well, what's, what's their profit percentage? Or what's their margin? Or what are they marking their stuff up by? You just do the same. Because you're a copycat mm -hmm. and you're not thinking like the other percentage of people. And how they think is, how can I use my business to achieve the outcomes that I want and the goals that I have in my life? Mm -hmm. And then you manipulate the levers in your business to allow you to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a business like old mate down the road and run the same business as them. So use your business to achieve the things that you want to achieve. And it could be that you don't need to have as many customers as old mate because you've got a higher margin. So at least mm. people say yes to you because they go, well, I've got an old mate down the road. And you go, cool, go have the shoddy service. We're the premium. If you want a glass of water on the way, and you get a car hundred bucks extra and all those different things that add up to being able to charge more and whatever it is to create more margin to then give you the things that you actually want in life. That's how you build a business that you want, not build a business based on what somebody else wants. Compare yourself to who you do. Isn't that the classic? Yeah. Isn't that one line? Not to who somebody is, else is today. Yeah. Yeah. Build your own car. Run your own race. There we go. Mm. Sprint when you need to. But uh, the data, uh, looping back to the topic at hand, at the top of the pod, is um, look for efficiencies in your business, remove the paper, uh, don't worry about Jan or Ben from accounts, you'll find a way to redeploy them in the business somewhere. Um, E invoices is, uh, invoicing is coming, embrace it. Uh, get the data, make sure it's right, because ultimately when you come to sell the business, dudes like us are gonna come along and ask for it, because we're gonna to wanna to check. Yeah. And then it's gonna give the uh, prospective purchaser like, oh, gee, there's some rich insights here. We can just blow this up, or we've got comfort that, yep, this, uh, this is gonna tip along. Conversely, maybe you're looking to buy a business or acquire, acquire a competitor Hopefully they're not using Hexadata. Then you've got a place where you know you can actually add some value or maximize or increase the value of what you're buying as well. So this is sort of advice for people that really want to make sure that they're doing everything right. Mm. And there'll be battlers that will just go like, I'm never doing that stuff. And that's fine. Other people will want to target to buy things off of because hopefully we can actually get them for cheaper than what they could be worth and then add some value to them. Wise words, man. E-invoicing will cover uh, at another time, mate. I guess a really boring example for us of one way that we use data is that all of our revenue, when it comes into zero, we are splitting it between whether it's compliance type accounting work or it's consulting type work. Because at the end of the year or when we go business planning, we want to at any time be able to pull a report and go, okay, what's the percentage of our revenue that is actually consulting and value add type advisory work versus mm -hmm. compliance, mostly driven by the IRD, but doing it to a high standard and helping people along the way with that. Mm -hmm. And we know, and then we can figure out, oh, okay, how, that's, how come that's moved? Or um, do we want to be targeting another area or targeting more compliance or uh, more advisory and actually using the data that we have at hand to then drive our decision making. So it doesn't need to be really intense and uh, complicated. It just needs to be aligned to the things that you're thinking about, which usually comes back to your business plan. And if you don't have a business plan, then you need to get in touch with nz because we can help you build one out over the next 12 months and beyond as well. You can sit down and have a conversation with us around whether that's right for you. If it is not, we will say, don't worry about it. And we won't invite you to go through that process with you with us. But if we think it's gonna be good for you, you're gonna get a lot of value out of it, then we'd suggest that you do that with us. We'd love to hear from you, lmpnextadvisory.nz, or jump on the website and book a time to chat to us. Data and valuing and increasing the value of the business. Any last words, Beth? Mate, that is an exceptional closing plug there. Absolutely sensational stuff. Get amongst people. We know you've been tuning in for a while now. We know you're watching. Stop it with the excuses. Get in touch. And if you want to go to the Ed Sheeran concert, uh, Phil can give you a ride there when he drops his, <laughs> his family off, but use the... Uh, discount code filthy with a P, so P H I L T H Y, filthy, uh, filthy 50 for 50% 50 off your Eden Park journey to Hitchin.
What a go. It's quite depressing, this sound. Jeez, I hope he doesn't play this one at the concert. Oh, yeah. How's the online looking? 